These four astronauts arrive on a planet light years away from Earth and are soon to discover that the creatures they find are not their only worry. An astronaut named Taylor is in space, recording his final report before touchdown. He is in a spacecraft which has four containments, one for each of the four astronauts on board. His crew members are sleeping in the various containments, and he says he'll be joining them soon. They would complete their sixth month in space in less than an hour, and because they are traveling at the speed of light in accordance to Dr. Hasline's theory of time, the Earth should has aged 700 years since they left, although they have barely aged. Taylor enters the empty containment and falls into a long, soon-to-be-realized sleep. The spacecraft arrives at the new planet and descends underwater. The crew begin to wake up one by one. When Taylor wakes up, he checks on his crew and they are all fine. They realize they have all aged significantly, with full-grown beards. He then calls Stuart, but she does not respond. He checks on her and discovers she is dead. Just then, a massive flood of water begins to enter the spacecraft, sinking it in the process. He instructs one of the crew members, a man named Dodge, to read the atmosphere, which he confirms is fine. After failed attempts to save the spacecraft, they decide to abandon it. Just then, the spacecraft sinks fully. With a raft and three containers of provisions, these explorers set out on a journey in an unnamed planet in orbit around a star in the constellation Orion, 320 light-years away from Earth. Finally on land, Taylor instructs Dodge to run a soil test while he opens the boxes to see what they have. The planet, on the other hand, is a desolate, barren wasteland devoid of vegetation. Just huge rocks. Taylor realizes they only have one pistol, 20 rounds of ammo, a medical kit, a camera, a TX-9, and enough food and water to last three days. Three Earth days, at least, because they don't know how long a day is on the new planet. Landon, the crew's final member, asks him for his thoughts on Stuart's death. He tells Landon that he believes she died from an air leak in her containment, but he doesn't seem convinced. He tells them that they have been away from Earth for approximately 2,000 years. Dodge, having completed the soil testing, informs them that nothing will grow on the planet because all of the nitrogen has been locked into nitrates and only a trace of carbohydrate can be found. Before they leave, Landon plants the American flag on the ground and Taylor begins to laugh loudly at him. As they continue their journey, they come across a shrub, a sign of life. This gives them hope that there will be more, so they continue to move forward. Unknown to them, they are being observed and followed by unknown creatures. Moving on, they come across scarecrows, an indication that there may be farmland ahead. Finally, they arrive at a location where they can see a vast forest of trees and a natural water body. Excited, they remove their clothes and begin to swim and relax in the water. Unknown to them, the creatures were stealing their luggage and clothing. Landon notices fresh footprints on the shore of the water, indicating that someone has been there. He then invites the others to come and see, too. They notice the creatures running away with their luggage and clothes ahead of them. The three of them begin to pursue them. They eventually arrive at a location where they discover the last bits of their already torn clothing and fragments of their destroyed food containers. A short distance away, they see a plantation and an entire population of man-like creatures dressed in primitive attire, cavemen. The cavemen barely notice their presence. They are too busy plucking fruits from trees to notice. The three of them do realize one thing. The cavemen are mute. A few minutes later, a loud sound resembling a horn is heard in the distance, and the cavemen begin running away. The three explorers, puzzled, followed suit. They realize they are being pursued by beings riding horses. Taylor eventually looks at their pursuers and discovers, to his great surprise and amusement, that they are apes. Apes on horses, with guns, sticks, and nets. The apes ended up killing and capturing a large number of cavemen. While fleeing, Taylor is shot in the throat. Dodge, too, is shot multiple times while Landon is hit on the head with the heavy sticks they carry. Taylor, unconscious, wakes up in an ape-run hospital, where he discovers he is being treated by a veterinary doctor. How amusing. A female caveman was also captured by the apes and is lying next to him. Her blood is being transfused into him. A female ape known as Dr. Zira, an animal psychologist, comes in to check on Taylor. She is intrigued by the material used to make his trousers, or what remains of them, 
as well as his bright eyes. The veterinary doctor complains to Dr. Zira about how unclean humans are and questions why she hasn't informed the head scientist, Dr. Zayas, about promoting him. Dr. Zira informs him that the gorillas look down on the chimps and her opinions are almost never heard. Taylor is locked up in a cage. Dr. Zira arrives to check on all of the captives and she gives sugar to the cavemen after futile attempts to get them to speak. She tries to get Taylor to talk as well and he responds with signs that he understands her, despite the fact that he is unable to speak due to the gunshot wound to his throat. This fascinates Dr. Zira even more. Dr. Zayas, a gorilla, enters. Dr. Zira tells him about Taylor and how he differs from the other cavemen. She also instructs Taylor to demonstrate what he did for her, and when he does, Dr. Zayas appears unimpressed. He claims it's just mimicry, that man has no understanding and can only be taught a few simple tricks. Dr. Zayas completely dismisses the idea, claiming that Taylor resembled a typical caveman. The female caveman whose blood was transfused into him is also placed in the same cage as Taylor. Later, the captives are moved to another cage outside, a joint cage. Another male ape, Cornelius, approaches Dr. Zira. They both kiss, and she's thrilled to show him Taylor. Cornelius is Dr. Zira's fiancé and an archaeologist. Taylor attempts to write a message in the sand for Dr. Zira, but the other cavemen keep cleaning it up. A fight breaks out, and security steps in to break it up. One of them, wielding a burning torch, burns Taylor's shoulder and takes him into another cage. Meanwhile, Dr. Zaya sees some of the message and cleans it up. Inside, Dr. Zira approaches Taylor and asks for an ointment to be applied to his shoulder. He forcefully takes her notepad and scribbles, My name is Taylor on it. She becomes extremely intrigued and immediately demands that Julius, the security guard, release Taylor so that she can take him home. Cornelius continues to bombard Taylor with questions at Dr. Zira's house, and he keeps writing down the answers because he is unable to speak. Questions about where he learned to write and where he's from. Cornelius still can't believe his answers. Taylor inquires about Landon and informs them that his other crew member, Dodge, was killed to which they respond by stating that they know nothing about them. Taylor builds a paper plane to demonstrate how they landed on the planet. This sparks Dr. Zira and Cornelius' interest, especially since they believe flight is a scientific impossibility. Dr. Zira repeatedly tells Cornelius that Taylor could be the missing link in his theory. Cornelius apparently developed the theory that the ape evolved from a lower order of primate, possibly man, but half of the Academy rejected it as heresy. Taylor requests a map and attempts to show them where he landed, but Cornelius says it's impossible because it's the forbidden zone and no life can survive there. Dr. Zayas arrives with another ape, the commissioner for animal affairs, Dr. Maximus. They condemn Dr. Zira for bringing Taylor outside the laboratory premises, which is against laboratory rules, and order him to be returned. Before they leave, Dr. Zayas notices the paper plane and squashes it. In the laboratory, an ape informs Julius, the security guard, that Dr. Zayas wants Taylor in the operating room to be zelded. Taylor overhears them, and when security arrives to arrest him, he knocks him unconscious with his stick and flees. Chased by various security guards and regular apes, he arrives at the market and is eventually apprehended. Just then, Dr. Zira arrives and inquires as to why he fled. Taylor says, right in front of the entire ape community in the market, Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Taylor returns to his cage with his former cage mate, the female caveman. Minutes later, they're separated into different cages. Taylor bonds with the cavewoman and explains how Stuart would have been the Eve on the new planet. He then names her Anova because she does not have a name. Security enters and takes him to a room where he meets Dr. Zira, Cornelius, and the Tribunal of the National Assembly, which includes Dr. Zayas, Dr. Maximus, Dr. Honoris, Deputy Minister of Justice, and the President. During the trial, Dr. Honorius informs them that Taylor is a man and should not be tried under ape laws. Dr. Zayas goes on to say that Taylor is being disposed of rather than tried, whereas Dr. Zira and Cornelius were tried for scientific heresy. Cornelius tells them that during his expedition through the Forbidden Area, he discovered a cave containing proof of man's existence, just like Taylor. Taylor speaks up, shocking the tribunal. They instruct him to be gagged because it is unusual for a man to speak. 
Dr. Honorius goes on to charge Dr. Zira on behalf of the state, accusing her of experimenting on Taylor with a corrupt surgeon named Galen, tampering with his brain, and creating a talking monster. Doctor. Zira defends herself by claiming that she did not do it. However, even if she did, Taylor not only speaks, but also reasons. How could she have done that too? Dr. Honorius doubts Taylor's reasoning abilities and questions him about things written in the Ape Scrolls that Taylor does not know the answers to. Taylor, on the other hand, informs them that he arrived on their planet with other humans but was shot and captured by the apes. They all agree to go and see if they are among the captives. Taylor notices Landon, but when he attempts to contact him, he discovers that he has had surgery on his head and is unable to speak. Dr. Zaius clearly performed this act. The trial is adjourned, and Dr. Zira and Cornelius are charged with heresy for believing in things that contradict their scrolls. Taylor is taken to Dr. Zaius's office, where he is informed that his fate has already been decided prior to the trial. He would be given to Dr. Zaius for experimentation, but he says he will reconsider the penalties imposed on Dr. Zira and Cornelius if he reveals the location of the rest of his species. He gives Taylor six hours to confess, or he will perform surgery to obtain one. That night, an ape named Lucius enters and informs Julius, the security guard, that he has been sent by the Anti-Vivisectionist Society to free Taylor. When he presents the signed document to Julius, he hits him on the head, knocking him out. He then tells Taylor that he is Dr. Zira's nephew and that she sent him to abduct him. After releasing him, Taylor insists that they also release the cavewoman and flee the laboratory. They meet Dr. Zira and Cornelius at a rendezvous point and eventually escape with them. In the morning, they come to a stop in the forest, and Taylor requests a gun for protection. He collects one. Dr. Zira and Cornelius ask Taylor what they expect to find in the Forbidden Zone, about which Taylor is unsure. He tells them that any sign of an advanced man, including Landon's flag, will help clear their name. They then travel to the Forbidden Zone and cave. When they arrive, they are interrupted by Dr. Zaius and his men at the cave's entrance, and after a brief exchange of bullets due to the loss of Dr. Zaius's men, Dr. Zaius is forced to follow them to the cave to see the evidence of a life form before the apes, if any. Inside, they find a few man skeletons dating back far beyond the apes, as well as spectacles, fake teeth, and dolls, indicating that an advanced order of man existed prior to the apes. Dr. Zayas maintains that they could have been built by apes. Anova squeezes the doll by the neck, and it lets out a cry, Mama, surprising everyone, especially since dolls advanced to this degree have yet to be built by apes, proving Cornelius's point even more. Guns start to fire outside, and they leave the cave, realizing that Dr. Zayas's men are attacking them. Taylor uses Dr. Zayas as leverage, instructing him to order them to cease fire, which they do. He then instructs Lucius to obtain supplies, provisions, and horses from Dr. Zayas's men. The group then realizes that Dr. Zayas was always aware of man's existence prior to apes, but was afraid of man's potential, especially given that they were the cause of their extinction. He also feared man because the scroll refers to them as harbingers of death and warns all apes to be wary of them and prevent them from breeding in large numbers because man would eventually make a desert of their home and his as well. Taylor says goodbye to everyone. Dr. Zira wanted to do more than just say goodbye, so he suggested they kiss, which Dr. Zira does not mind. Cornelius was less than pleased with this. Off he went, riding on a horse alongside his Eve, to a zone where they were the only source of life. He sees a structure ahead, past gigantic rocks and sandy beaches. As he gets closer, he discovers that it is not just any structure, but the Statue of Liberty. He had never really left Earth. Rather, he had arrived at a point in the future when apes had supplanted humans as the dominant species after their extinction. Dr. Zaius orders that the cave be sealed to eliminate all evidence. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.